So if you look around and see how grateful, how thankful we should be, God is working around us everywhere, everywhere. But sometimes we get so busy that we don't even see him working. We, because we think we're doing this and we're doing that, but God's doing great and mighty things all around us, and we need to open our eyes and see it. So, but you know, this weekend was Thanksgiving weekend, and we had so much to be thankful for. So I thought maybe this morning we would share some of the things we're thankful for. And I will start off, number one, and I know this is across the board for everybody, I am thankful for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, without him, oh, just, oh, 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 right, oh, just think how horrible that would be without him. And the second thing I'm thankful for is for my, the love of my life, for him being a part of our, for us having 50 years together. I am so thankful for that. And then the third thing, I hope y'all don't mind this, the third thing I'm thankful for is our, our church home. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that God has brought the people that he wanted to live together, love together, <coughs> minister together, all together. And I'm so thankful for y'all because he has been so good to us to allow us to be here for 25 years. So those are the things that I'm thankful for. Do y'all have anything that you would like to share that you are thankful for? I'm thankful for my wife and my church family. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful you know. for my health. Yes, <laughs> for your health, for your health. Anything else? I'm thankful our family is back together again. Sweet. Yes. God's good. Yes. Anybody I'm else? I'm thankful my mom is adjusting to the nursing home and my sister's out of the hospital. Oh, no, good. Yeah. Yeah. Very well. Yeah. See how blessed we are? Amen. Yeah. Amen. He does have beautiful daughters. Yeah. No comment. Well, <laughs> I'm thankful for my family and for my Savior because where would I be without them? That's the truth. Yes. That's the truth. You know, <laughs> that's right. That's an awesome blessing for them also to have you as their teacher. Yes. <laughs> That, that was our truth. We're giving you our truth, whether you agree with it or not. That's our truth, right? Okay. <laughs> yes. But see, we are so, if we'll just stop, just stop and just look at our lives, realize how blessed we really are. <laughs> Instead of having the grumblies, I don't have the other. You know, no, 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 no. There's so much more joy on the other side. So let's be thankful. I'm We're going to sing. That family right there. You're thankful for that family right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Precious. Well, we're going to stand and we're going to sing the solid rock. Because you have to stand to sing this because it says on Christ the solid rock, I stand. So let's stand and let's sing it. And let's sing it with a joyful and a grateful heart because we're singing to our Savior. <laughs> My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest ring, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness sinks, his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His own discovery and his blood. Support me in the whelming flood When all around my soul gets wet He lives all my hope and stay On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand When we shall come with trumpet sound Oh, may I live in it be found, rest 
85 if you're using the hymn book. Uh, the hymn book. Take it out. Let's make our statement about this grand old book. Are you ready? This is my Bible. God's, God's holy word. It's given to teach the truth, to prove me of sin, to correct me when I'm wrong, and instruct me in what is right. It's a lamp in my daily walk, and a light in my eternal path. And if I hide his words in my heart, then I will not sin against God. This is my Bible and contains my life today. Amen? Amen. Have a seat. It's good to see you. You may be going, wait a minute, I was here last week and it seemed like it was a little fuller last yeah. week, amen? Yeah, that's well, that's what they were saying in the first service too, so uh, it's kind of, uh, we've got folks that are out of socket because of the holiday, I think, and then, and then with the two services we split again and now we're back down to our split crowd, so it's kind of one of those things that we, we do. It's good though, it's good to see you, and it's good to uh, have you in our services. And uh, amen. amen. We, uh, Ruby and I decorated this weekend. Uh, the, 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 and we were talking about how we decorated in, uh, with uh, Sarah. I know, with Sarah being here. Sarah, you remember helping us decorate the year when we put garland 
oh, we strung it everywhere. We had garland and lights and we had stuff. But, you know, over the years, we've got a little older and we've got a little smarter and we've got, we've got where we don't climb the ladder like we used to. And so we decided that we just do more classy instead of more of. So uh, we try to be a little more classy. And I think we did pretty good. Amen? Looks nice, doesn't it? And the center, of course, is the nativity, which we'll be talking about for the next few days. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have an announcement. Ruby, you have an announcement? Next Saturday at 1030, we are having a ladies Christmas brunch. It is open church-wide to all the ladies because we want everyone to participate in this. Um, it, we have door prizes. Our speaker is uh, Betsy Rawlings. She is Allie's mom. And uh, Kayla Birchfield is going to do the music. And we're going to sing Christmas carols together. And we're just going to share memories and enjoy being with each other. Enjoy the sisterhood of having people just being in our lives. Um, there is a sign-up sheet on the um, bulletin board, and also there is a sign-up if you want to bring some food. If you don't, God always provides. We always have enough. So I would like to invite all the ladies to be a part of that next yes. Saturday at 1030. Amen. Also, do you know about James High? No. Uh, Kay just received a call that James was not doing very well. Oh, no. And so she was headed to Conroe, so we need to pray for her and for yeah. James. Well, let's do that. Let's pray for the highs. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you for the highs, how much they've meant to us as a part of our church family. And we pray for James right now. We know, Father, that, uh, that this is, comes kind of as a shock, and we just pray for Kay as she goes to be with him, and that you'll be with the family through this. We know, Father, everything works to your, to your good, and so we trust you in this as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, all right, so don't forget all the activities. There will be a, a, a service tonight at 6.30. And uh, I've got a few nights that I've got kind of before we get to the first of the year. And so I'm going to be teaching on the church for the next few Sunday nights. Just some things I want to just give you. I've done these things in the past, but I just I love to talk about the church. And so I'll be dealing with that tonight at 6.30. So if that you'll come and be a part of that. I know Carol Lee would love to have the kids back for tonight. Amen? Good. And then uh, we've got a lot of things planned. Make sure you watch your bulletin and your newsletter of calendar and all that stuff so that you don't miss anything. If you're in a Sunday school, you should be in a Sunday school. If you're not in a Sunday school, find out. There's a Sunday school having an activity, a Christmas activity, I'm sure. And you need to find out which one you want to go to. That's kind of what I do. I kind of go through and see which one, who's having the best stuff and uh, show up at theirs, you know. But uh, they would love for you to come and be a part of it. So uh, find out what your Sunday school class is doing and be a part of the Sunday school uh, Christmas parties, okay? All right, let's bring the kids down and see what's in the surprise box. Oh, I don't think we've got any new visitors. Nope. These are all, all the ones you see are, have been here before. Okay. So that's good. Hey, girls. How are y'all? Graceland has the surprise box. And she's gathering it up now. Fixing to come this way. Hey, guys. Man, I'm glad to have some boys up here with me. I get kind of crowded in by all the girls sometimes. Boys rule. Girls drool. Oh, no, they don't. No, girls are pretty. Grayson, bring it right here, sweetie baby. That is so cool. Do you want to sit right here? Okay. You can sit up here if you want to. There you go. Let's see what Grayson put in the box. Oh, that's very cool. How old are you, Grayson? How old are you? You're 15. I thought you were. 13. Uh, 13. She's four. One in three make four. She brought a ornament that goes on the tree. A little bell. Isn't that cool? It is. It's an angel with a bell. You know what that reminds me of? Oh, you kids, listen. Have y'all watched It's a Wonderful Life yet? Do you know about It's a Wonderful Life? All right, you parents, you need to get your act together and make sure these kiddos get to watch It's a Wonderful Life. I have too, and I will watch it again this year, at least two or three times. Got to. It's the most greatest, it's the most greatest Christmas movie they've ever made. 
And this little bell reminds me of that movie. In that movie, let me tell you a story. In that movie, and it's a make-believe story. It doesn't have anything to do. It's not biblical. But uh, uh, a man has an angel visiting. And the angel has no wings. I know, that's kind of what he said. What kind of angel do I have that has no wings? Well, he said, I've got to earn my, my wings. And in the story, it, it, he tells the man, he says, every time you hear a bell ring, an angel gets their wings. Now, that's not biblical. That's not true. But I just want you to know, it's kind of a cute story. When I think of a bell, I can't help but think of that song about, I heard the bells on Christmas Day ring out. And I think of bells and angels when I think of Christmas. And when I think of that ornament, I think what a beautiful ornament it is. And how the angels come and they take care of us. God sends them to take care of us. And that's a good thing. We don't get to see them and we don't need to talk to them or pray to them. But just know that they're there. God sends them for us. And I thank you, Grayson, for bringing the little bell and reminding me of the favorite movie that I have in my It's a Wonderful Life. Y'all make sure ask your mom and dad. Say, I, I think Brother Jim wants us to see that. Amen. <laughs> That's a good one. It's black and white, though. Yeah, you don't like black and white movies, do you? Mm -hmm. They have one in color, though. If y'all need it, I have it, by the way. Okay, Grayson, thank you for bringing that. Let's pray, and I, you can have that back. Stay here with me. We're going to pray, okay, and then you can go. Father, we thank you so much for angels that you send to take care of us. And Lord, we thank you for the joy of Christmas and all the things that we get to enjoy. And I pray for these little ones, God. I pray that maybe today something will be said to make them realize their need for a Savior and that they might be saved. And Lord, those that are saved, I pray that they'll continue to grow as a Christian. Thank you, Lord, for the children you sent in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, surprise box. I always put it under me, don't I? All right. Have y'all had the surprise box? Have y'all been able to bring this yet? Will they be here next Sunday? Yes. Uh, would one of you like to take it and put something in it for me? Okay. You want to do that? Okay. Any one of you. Just uh, put, put one thing in there and bring it back. Don't tell anybody. And it'll be my surprise. Okay. What's your name? <coughs> Say it again. And, Andrade. Am I saying it right? Andrade. I'm good. <laughs> I've got a little Italian blood in me. I don't know if that's Italian or not. <laughs> Sounds Italian. Uh, but anyway, Andrade, you bring it with you next week, okay? And I'll be so glad for you to bring that. That's great. Do we have children's church for all the kids? Okay. All the kids, you can go right back there. There's somebody waiting for you. I'm going to go, go to children's church, and we'll see you later, okay? Thank you, Grayson. Amen. That's right. Mario Andrade and Dreddy. Yeah. Good. All right, brother, can we listen to the song? Let's stand together. If you're using the hymn book, 89, oh, come all you faithful. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, Oh, the peace.
devotions on Wednesday night about grace and how God does so much for us that we don't deserve. And we just had Thanksgiving and we really should have Thanksgiving all year long. We should have an attitude of gratitude. And this song is my tribute. It would sound much better with a piano but as I said this we got up early the first service and it got time for special music and I found out there wasn't any and I decided God had laid this song on my heart Amen. for just today. So pray for me as I uh, present it to you. How oh, can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be I owe it all to thee to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory for the things he has done with his blood. He has saved me with his power. He has raised me to God. Be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. And if I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary with his blood. He has saved with his power, he has raised me to God. Be the glory for the things he has done. That is a true testimony in song. Amen? You know, every song is a sermon. You ever thought about that? Every song is a sermon? Some songs have, some songs have uh, two points, some have three-point outlines, and some have four or five-point outlines. Those are the verses, of course, but much like a sermon. And each one has a different 
story to tell, and we ought to listen when we sing, because they're wonderful. Well, this morning, I want to share with you from the Word of God concerning the Christmas story. You know, I find out that every, every story in the Bible has something for us. And you take the nativity, you have Mary and Joseph, and you have the baby Jesus, you have the shepherds and the wise men. If we were to take each one, and I've done this before, where we take each one and we, we look at each one and we find that story that we need to hear, that message we need to hear. And it's amazing how the Bible has that ability. I, I, my grandson, Alex, this week he came up to me and said, Papa, he said, I found your book. And he said, I'm doing that with you every day. He, that little book I wrote that has the devotions in it. Well, he's reading that. And, and I, I thought as I, I heard that, that book I wrote, you, you read three chapters a day and I pick out one verse from the three chapters. The things I'm doing now online is a chapter a day. I read a chapter a day and then I make a comment about it. Every chapter of the Bible has a message. All you have to do is look for it. It's there. There may be several messages. I find there's several messages. I, I, and it amazes me that how many messages there are. When I open that, I've never turned to a chapter and not found a message. And I'm coming through it now for the third, fourth time. And I, it's always there. So uh, you, the messages are there. And this morning, I want to do kind of that. I, I want to talk about Mary and Joseph for a little bit. And I want to talk about their story. So let's have a word of prayer. And then we're going to read a passage of Scripture. And then I want to teach you some things about their story. Father, Lord, I thank you this morning for the fact that we have your word, which has so much for us. Oh, God, forgive us that we neglect your word. Many of us, Father, the only time we even open the Bible is when we come to church. Lord, help us to realize the importance of looking into your word every day and finding a message just from you for each of us. We love you and thank you for this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn your Bibles. Turn to Matthew chapter 1, if you would. Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to take the story. Normally, you look at Luke. That's the normal place. We're going to begin. I want you to hear it from Matthew's viewpoint. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. And I'll begin in verse 18. Now, the birth of, the, of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on those things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet Isaiah, uh, by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be, be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. Can you remember... The days when you were espoused to your mate. When, you remember the days when pre-engagement days? And you, you know, I, I, uh, they're fresh to me. I, I know it's been 50 years, but these are some of the most precious memories I have. And I think on them a lot. The days when Ruby and I first started dating. And how that, you know, it wasn't early on that we began to think, you know, this might be the one. This might be the one. And um, as we continued to date and grew closer together, came that time when, I realized that this was the one I wanted to ask to marry me, and, and uh, I was pretty sure she'd say yes. I was hoping she would anyway. And then I, I went to her, you know, and scared to death. And Of course, I'd already talked to her dad, and, uh, you know, that was one of those things you did back then. And, and uh, he said, you know, I don't have any money, but you can marry my daughter. I don't know what that had to do with anything. But, um, but I, I went that night, and uh, we prepared the box. I've told you the story and gave it to her and asked her to marry me, and she said yes. And, then after that, you know, we, uh, the planning of the wedding and getting things ready, the excitement of a wedding and all, it's exciting. 
Mary and Joseph, they had a similar experience. They were probably, they could have been uh, a pre-planned wedding. It could have been that they were, knew they were going to be married to each other from a child. That was pretty popular at that time. It could have been, we don't know. But it could have been. And maybe as they grew up, you know, they, they watched each other grow into a, a beautiful young lady or she saw him grow into a nice young man. And, and uh, now it's come time when they're going to be married. They're spouse to each other. They're engaged. And the engagement process begins and they're working towards the marriage and uh, the thought of marriage and everything else. And then God showed up. I want to talk to you about when God makes a mess of your plans. You see, all the dreams that we had. And let me just ask you a question. When you asked, and it may have been not long ago, but me, 50 years ago, when I asked Ruby to marry me, we spent a lot of time talking to each other, visiting about what we wanted to do, where we wanted to go, where we wanted to live what kind of house we wanted to have, where we wanted our children to grow up. We talked about all those things. Do you know, here we are 50 years later, and I don't think any of those things ever happened. Isn't that strange? Life happens, doesn't it? All the dreams, all the plans, many times get changed. Sometimes, like in Mary and Joseph's life, they really become a little messy. You think about it. They certainly didn't plan for Mary to be pregnant before they got married. That wasn't supposed to happen. They'd been very careful as people, as as children of God, people of integrity. They wouldn't, they wouldn't adapt, uh, they would not allow themselves to be put in that position where they were tempted like that. They were very careful. They wanted it all to be right. And then all of a sudden, Mary comes up pregnant. She's confused. How'd this happen? She's never even known a man, she says. And Joseph, whoo, can you imagine? There he is planning the wedding, planning everything to be just exactly right. And all of a sudden, the girl that he's fallen in love with, the girl that he wants to marry, to be married to the rest of his life, she comes up pregnant? And it's miraculous? Are you kidding me? Come on, get real. You know, thank goodness for an angel, amen? You know, when God messes your plans up, I want to tell you something. He doesn't always send an angel to tell you what he's doing. But thank goodness he did for Joseph, or Joseph may have made a mistake. Because he was a man of integrity, and he knew that there was a problem. And he would either have to expose her, embarrass her, or put her away privately. He had to do something. But when the angel told him, you marry that girl, that's what he did. God messed with their plans. It wasn't their goals that they had, but it was exactly what God wanted for them. Now let's, um, I'm going to take that story and I want to bring out three observations that we need to hear. Because I'm going to tell you, God will mess with your plans. He does it a lot. It's kind of the way He works. You can almost be sure that if your plans got interrupted by something, it probably was God that interrupted them. Even though it may have been a circumstance or some other thing, it was God putting a hold on your plans because he had something better to do. Let me give you three observations. Number one, God didn't ask Joseph and Mary, he told them. You won't find any place in Scripture where God came to Mary and said, Mary, I'd like to, for you to be the mother of Jesus, but for you to do that, you've got to be a virgin, so you can't be married to Joseph at this time to be pregnant. I kind of think Mary might have said, well, Lord, God, I'm not sure how that's going to work. I don't think my mom and dad will like that very much. Amen? Right? But you notice he didn't ask her that. He didn't go to Joseph. The angel didn't come to Joseph. Joseph, we want you to know this is what's going to happen. Is that okay with you? No. He just told them. He just told them. How many of us are doing what we planned when we said, I do? None of us, probably. I found that the majority of the plans I had as a young person are radically different than what has come to pass. Some of the dreams have changed because I've changed my decision or my desires. Now, that's interesting, but I I really find out that that's God working to change me. But then I also know that there's been circumstances that have in my life that were outside my control that changed my direction. And God was in charge of that. 
God's never asked me when he had chosen, what he had chosen, put those circumstances in my life. My son, probably one of the most tragic events that ever happened in my life was when my son was almost killed on a, on a, a sea doo a wave runner. And uh, had God come to me, you know, we were going to reunion and excitement, and we're getting packed up out in the car, and God comes and says, Hey, Jim, I uh, wanted to let you know that on this vacation while you're gone, uh, I'm probably going to, it's going to come real close to me even taking your life's son. Is that okay? I mean, I'm going to hit his head real hard with a wave runner, and he'll probably be knocked out for several days, maybe even weeks, and that'd be all right with you, won't it? Can you imagine? See, that's why God doesn't ask. God just does. Because God always knows what's best. See, I don't have the way to see into the future. I don't have the way to see the big picture like he does. I don't have the ability to know that my son being knocked out like that and almost dying was going to change the dynamic of him and his home as well as the home of my daughter. I didn't know that. There was no way to know that. I didn't know how it was going to change me. God did. And God had a reason for that to happen. Would I have liked not to have happened? You bet I would have. I don't like going through that. But God knew I needed it. And God knew that He needed it. There was something God was doing that we didn't understand. So God doesn't always tell us what He's doing. He just does it. And then that causes us to have to react in faith, doesn't it? Are you with me? Yes. Give me an amen, would you? Yes. Thank you. We've got to react in faith. We've got to say, you know what? I don't understand this God, but because you're God, I'm willing to accept it. I know you know what's best. God uses many things to change us. Now give me a second notice that I see here. God's plan for Mary and Joseph was not an easy one. Some people have this idea that God's will is the easy road. If we just do God's will, everything turns out rosy. Everything's wonderful. That's not true. Mary and Joseph's life is evident of that. I mean, good night. They, they, they just think about all the things they had to do. It just changed because of her being pregnant. Every time she walked down the street, people were talking about her. She got pregnant. She said, it's from God. <laughs> can you believe that her mom and dad believe that? And poor Joseph. Can you imagine? This is not an easy road that God had chosen for her. Or for Joseph either. It was going to be tough. There were a lot of things that God was going to put them through that were going to be tough. Let's just think about something. You know, you might want to ask the question, we did this last week a little bit, why didn't God work it out so that the tax was collected either before or after the baby was born? Wouldn't that have been easier on Mary? I mean, Mary's ninth month pregnant whenever God puts this tax out there that causes them to have to leave Nazareth to go to Bethlehem and she's nine months pregnant. Now, I've never been nine months pregnant, but I, my wife has been on three different occasions. And I tell you, there's not a whole lot she does during that ninth month. And if you ask about getting on a donkey and riding for days, I'm pretty sure she'd look at you like you're nuts. But that's what God required of Mary. It's not easy. It wasn't an easy road. It wasn't something easy for them to do. The baby was born in a manger. God came and told, the angel came and told Mary, Mary, you're going to have a baby. It's going to be the Messiah. And Mary's going, whoo, whoo, whoo. You remember the magnificence she sang? And awesome, you know. You are going to be blessed, Mary. Oh, good. Instead of, being Mary, instead of the baby being born in the Motel 6, it's going to actually be born in the Marriott? No, it's uh, going to be in a stable. Where cows and animals are? Yeah. Poop on the floor? Yeah. Well, that's kind of dirty, don't you think? Mm, yeah. It's kind of smelly, isn't it? Mm, yeah. You'll have a surgery team there for me, won't you? No. Just a teenage boy that's never delivered a baby before. His name's Joseph. going to take care of that. Not an easy road. Do you see what I'm talking about? But... She's giving birth to the Messiah, God's Son. It's not easy following the will of God. Then after the baby's born, they're forced almost immediately to leave Bethlehem and go to Egypt. 
because of the threat of King Herod. No, I mean, God is sovereign. God's bigger than King Herod. Couldn't, couldn't God change his heart? Couldn't he make him more susceptible to accept Jesus instead of trying to kill him and then all the other babies as well? It's a hard answer, isn't it? It's hard to find the answer there. God didn't make it easy. Being in God's will is not easy. And then when you think about the life that Jesus grew up in, Joseph somewhere between coming back from Egypt and them and Jesus starting his ministry at age 30, Joseph dies. The husband, the breadwinner, dies. Jesus becomes the man of the house. It's not easy being in the will of God. Mary's widowed. And she's got these children to continue to raise. It's not going to be easy. We may ask those questions. But listen, you know, Jesus told about two ways. And he said one of them was broad and easy to go up. But where did it lead? It led to destruction. But the one that was tight and small and narrow and hard to pass, where did it lead? Eternal life. He tells us the will of God is not easy. It's not easy. But it's still the will of God. Christ had to choose a path. That God laid out for him. It led to the cross. It's not easy. 33 years old being executed on a cross. As part of the will of God. Paul. Paul was chosen to be an apostle. And to bring us the word of God. And as he does he's imprisoned. And finally executed. But both of these chose the will of God. So we need to kind of change the way we look at things. If you've got it in your head that every time you do something for God or you do something by the will of God that you're going to receive all these blessings, you need to change your thought process a little bit. What you're going to get is to be in the will of God. That's the greatest blessing of all. To know that even though a tragedy may come, even though a loss may come, even though it may cost me something, God knows exactly where I am and exactly what I'm going through. He knows. But here's the neat thing. He won't leave you alone. Isn't that good? Let me give you a verse. Isaiah 43, 2 is a great verse. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, thou shalt not overflow thee. They shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You see, here's the thing. You may have to go through some tragedies and losses and all the rest, but God says this, you will go through them because that's my will, but I will go with you all the way. I will walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So the coolest thing about that is to know that I'm going through something I don't understand. I want to question God about every step I'm having to take. But in the middle of that, I've got to stop and recognize God knows exactly what's happening and has a plan for it to accomplish something in my life. It's absolutely the greatest thing in the world to ease the tension of having to go through those things. Observation number three. Though things were difficult, God did bless them. I see it in two thoughts. First of all, I see it in the way they looked at Jesus. The way Mary and Joseph watched Jesus. Now, you've got to be a parent. You've got to understand this. As a parent, how would you like to be the parent of the most perfect child that will ever live? You think yes, right? Think again. It might be a little more difficult than you imagine. I want you to look at uh, Luke chapter 2, and I want to walk through some of the thought process that they had. And I'm going to begin with, the, I'm going to begin with verse 50, 49, 51. I'm going to walk early. I'm going to come back to verse 23, 33. So look at 49, chapter 2, verse 49 through 51. I'm sorry, let's begin verse 52. And this is kind of the finale. This is kind of an interesting thought. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. So here's your son, right? And he's God in human form. Perfect in every way. 
But notice what it says. He increased in wisdom and stature and in favor of God. And to me, I'm thinking, as a parent, I've still got to train him. That's my responsibility as a mom, as a dad. I'm to train up a child in the way he should go. And the one that God's placed in my, in my, in my charge is none other than God Himself. And somehow or another, I'm to help Him increase in wisdom and stature and favor. I'm thinking I've got a big job ahead of me. You know, it's a lot easier to say yes or no than it is to say, well, now I know you created everything, but let's just talk about why you did this. You know, it'd be tough. And yet that was their charge. Look at verse 49 through 51. And he said unto them, remember Jesus is now 12 years old. He's down at the temple uh, visiting with the elders there, the, uh, the priest, and um, conversing and sharing his wisdom with them. And they're in awestruck. And uh, Mary and Joseph have been looking for him for three days. They find him. And he said to them, How is it that thou sought me? Wist not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. Every time Jesus started to say something, she would listen and she'd go, hmm, that's, that's really wise. You know? We brag about our kids. I, I love to be around my, my, my kids as they brag on their children. And I've got the smartest grandchildren in the whole world, by the way. I just want you to know that. My, I, I agree with that. My, my kids tell me that all the time. And they're all the time telling me how they are so talented and all the rest. And they, they are, you know. I don't take, I don't describe. But can you imagine talking about Jesus? Oh, it would have been overwhelming. And the fact they didn't understand, he said, I've got to be about my father's business. And Joseph is standing there, well, I'm right here. I've been gone three days and you're about my business. What have you been doing? Selling little furniture? You know? No, I've been my, my real father's business. They kept it themselves. Then verse 40, look at this. And the child grew and waxed strong, and the spirit filled with wisdom and grace of God was upon him. Again, just the idea, uh, you know, just a little facetious, okay? Joseph's in the, in the shop building a piece of furniture and he's struggling with this piece, how he was going to put it together, make the joint fit just right. And he's staring at it and he's looking at it and Jesus, the eight-year-old, walks up and said, Hey, Dad, this is what I would do. And he fixes it. Kind of blow your mind, you know, you think about. I just, I can't even imagine... When we sing that song, Mary, Did You Know? Doesn't it just blow your mind, the thought that may have gone through her head when she kissed Jesus goodnight? She watched him go to sleep. Can you imagine? Verse 33, And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of, spoken of him. They would listen. And he'd say something, they think, you know, we need to correct him on that. And they start to correct him, and the other one says, wait a minute. You know, he was right. <laughs> you get a little frustrated after a while. You'd marvel. You'd begin to listen. But it must have been a joy beyond belief to see Christ grow up, to watch all those things, to know that he was growing into this wonderful man, not of God, but man who is God, Emmanuel. Ultimately, Jesus grew up to be a blessing to the whole world, not just to his family. It wasn't just about Mary saying, you, let me show you this piece of furniture my son built with his dad. It wasn't like that. Now it's, let me introduce you to my son who is the savior of the whole world. Wow. You know, if you have been blessed with children that have grown into being people of influence and important to their world, you're proud of them. Most parents are blessed if their kids grow up to do something good for mankind. I realize that Joseph is gone at this time, but Mary must have been proud to know that she'd had a hand in that, that she was the mother, she was the one who raised him and taught him whatever it was she could teach him. But can you imagine the blessing Mary had when she experienced the firstborn son, Jesus Christ, after suffering the tragedy of his death, 
to be there when he rose from the grave? Can you imagine at the ascension? Remember, she's standing there and Jesus slowly lifts off the earth and disappears into heaven. Would that be one of those moments mom would go, that's my baby! <laughs> right? God always has a plan for us. No matter what it is, God has a plan. But it's not always an easy one. What, the greatest tragedy we face as humans is the loss of a loved one. We have to say that. The loss of a child, the loss of our mate, the loss of our parents. Tragedy. We call that a tragedy. Do you know what Jesus says about it? Listen to this. It's in Psalms. He says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of a saint. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. What we deem a tragedy, what we deem as the worst thing that can happen, God says, no, it's precious. What makes the difference? It depends on where you're viewing it from, amen? Depends on where you're viewing it from. But God will use even death to change people's lives. Every funeral I preach, I have in the back of my mind the idea that this person's death is going to be responsible for somebody's new life. Amen. I want them to hear the gospel. This may have been the only way God could have got them to a church or to sit under a preacher's preaching at a funeral of somebody they love. And I will never fail to give the gospel because it might be that one thing, that one person's salvation by that death, but it's important. Not only that, not just death, but there's other tragedies too, aren't there? I mean, there's so many things that can happen, you know. Malpractice. Let me give you an illustration. In your, song, in your hymn book, there are songs written by a lady by the name of Fanny Crosby. Do you know about Fanny Crosby? It's unbelievable the amount of songs she's written. We sing them. I, I, they're just, we sing them all the time. And uh, they're, they're amazing songs. We, we were uh, at a church and we decided we were going to sing all the Fanny Crosby songs that were in the hymnal that we had. And I don't think we ever got through them all. There was that many of them. There are just so many. You know, she was blind since birth, just about. I think she was like three days old. And a doctor performed a procedure on her eyes thinking he was trying to save something and he destroyed her eyesight. She was blind from like three days old. All her life blind and yet she never stopped to whine and cry and become bitter about it she used this opportunity to bless us with this music let me tell you a story about her if you haven't heard it it's a wonderful story there was a man who came and was visiting with her and didn't know she was blind and she was so well versed in her house she could get around her house and you'd never know she wasn't she couldn't see and he'd been there quite a while, and all of a sudden he said something, and she said, well, I can't do that because I'm blind. And he said, what? She said, yeah, I haven't seen since I was a, uh, in my life, basically. He said, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize. She said, don't be sorry. She said, the first person I get to see is Jesus. That's Fanny Crosby. Taking what would normally be a tragedy, something that people would whine and cry and be bitter. Why, God? Why couldn't I? Instead, she saw it as an opportunity to be used for the Lord. Another fellow by the name of H.G. Spafford. Brother Spafford had a wife and three girls. He needed to go to England and he was going to go, but he couldn't go with them. And so he put them on a boat and sent them on and then he was going to follow later. During the wait, he got a message that the ship his wife and three daughters were on went down at sea. He waited and waited and finally there was a telegram came. It came from his wife. And all it said was, saved alone. The daughters were gone. Mr. Spafford, in the hurt and pain and mourning of their deaths, wrote these words. 
Oh, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. God didn't ask Fanny Crosby or H.G. Spafford if it was okay to allow these things to happen. Because had he asked, they'd have probably said no. But instead, he took them through that, and because of that, nearly every Sunday, some place has benefited because of the blessing that came out of their tragedy. While you and I may not think our lot is nearly that tragic nor our influence nearly that broad, the truth is, if we will agree to follow God's plan, no matter how difficult, eternity will record a far-reaching impact for good because of it. I want to read that again. If we will agree to follow God's plan, no matter how difficult, eternity will record a far-reaching impact for good because of it. We have to come to these times of tragedy. We have to come to these times of loss. And we have to recognize that God did not forget us. God did not put us in here to beat us up or to be mean to us. God brought us through this for one thing, and that was to accomplish His will. And He's going to, yeah, it's, and it's always perfect, Zechariah. Right? It's always perfect. And it's always made to benefit. Someone. And when we get to heaven, we can look back from the top side and see what happened in that tragedy or that loss. And all of a sudden we'll understand the miraculous event that God brought through our lives that we thought was tragic. But we look at it from the top sides and realize what a blessing it was that God allowed us to go through that. We need to be do that from this side though. We need to learn to accept those things from this side. To know that God has not forgotten us. God has not created something that he doesn't have a plan for. Everything in your life, God has a plan. Trust him. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I thank you so much for the lesson this morning. May we, Father, like Mary and Joseph, maybe our lives are not turning out exactly as we anticipated. The blessings don't seem to be as common as they are or as we had planned. But still, Father, in the middle of it, might we recognize, much like Mary and Joseph must have recognized, what a blessing it was that you chose them to be the custodians of your son, Jesus. A blessing in the hurt, the pain, the suffering, the loss. What a blessing. Little did they know as they watched him as a baby play in that the whole world would be changed because of him. Even at the cross, Mary wondered. But Lord, how you were so faithful. Lord, in our lives, I pray that we might recognize when you're working in our lives to accomplish the things you want to, the hard things, the things that are difficult, the things that make us want to ask why. Might we immediately begin to think about the fact that you are God and you love us and you've not forgotten us and you have a plan. And even in loss, your will will be done. And we get to be a part of it. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If God's speaking your heart about a decision you need to make or maybe a prayer need that you have, you'd like for me to pray with you, I'd love to do that. Maybe you're here and for the first time you're beginning to recognize, you know what, I need this Jesus in my life. I need a Savior like that. And I would invite you to come and receive Him as your Lord and Savior today. Whatever your need is, whatever decision God's calling upon you to make, we want to give you that opportunity. And so we're going to have a time of invitation. 
So I invite you to stand to your feet right where you are. Heads bowed, eyes are closed. The girls are going to play and sing. And as they do, I'm going to be here at the front. You're welcome to come. I'll pray with you. Or you can use the altars and just pray by yourself. But this is a time for you to take what you've heard and apply it in some way to whatever situation you might be going through. Lord, bless now our invitation in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You do what God wants you to do right now. Today. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for this message. We thank you, Lord, for how we, many of us, Father, we needed to hear that. We've been through it this week. We've been through it this month. Some of us have suffered and we've been questioning. And Lord, today we pray that answers have been made and people have understood and we begin to grasp hold of the, the magnitude of your work and that we get to be a part of it. May we be blessed because of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you be seated for just a second?